Hey there, welcome back to my bullshit. So what the hell is going on right now? Why is there a speed paint playing in the background? I don't know if anybody noticed, but whenever I talk about my sprites or the cartoon versions of me, I use very specific, slightly off-sounding sort of wording. I basically word it in a way that can be ambiguously interpreted that I did not draw the damn things. But I did in fact draw the damn things. I wasn't trying to hide the fact that I can draw, rather I was trying to avoid a situation where someone might call me a certain title. An artist. Now I'm not gonna explain why I have such a weird relationship with that label. Actually me and my therapist are still trying to figure that out. All y'all need to know is that I can create art, but I've decisively planned on never bringing it up. So why the hell am I bringing it up right now? <laughs> well, you see, about a month ago, the creator of the game Yon Dairy Simulator announced that an art contest is being held. Now, this is not the first time a Yon Sim art contest has ever taken place. But it is the first time I've ever wanted to be a part of it because of the prizes. Now, merch is cool and all, but I could live without it. But when it was revealed what the first place prize was, I nearly lost my freaking mind. Yonderi Dev was going to give the first prize winner a chance to put their OC in the actual game. Now, I'm telling you right now, if I win the contest, my OC is not going in the game. I'm going in the game! I'm going to submit my internet persona, aka the cartoon versions of me, and that bitch is going to replace Gemataku and become the gaming club leader. I have never wanted something so badly, and can anyone blame me? I have a chance to be immortalized as a character in a video game. I don't care how slim my chances are of winning, I am tossing my hat in that flipping ring. I will do whatever it takes for this dream of mine to come true. That's right, I went back on my resolve to never address the fact that I can make art all for a video game prize. So this is what this video is. This is a video of me begging the internet to help me win. And I know in all likelihood this might not even work or help me to win first place or any place at all. But if there is even a chance I can convince someone watching this video to click on the link in the description below, make a Medibang art account, and like and favorite my work to help me win, I just had to take that chance. I will shamelessly beg for this. Please, 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 please vote for my creation and help me achieve this dream of mine. Please help me win. I don't know if you want to do me this kindness, but if there is something I can do in order to convince you to vote for me, then leave a comment below to let me know. I am dead freaking serious. I cannot stress enough how much I deeply and severely want this. Okay, now I'm going to take a pause on shamelessly begging to address what it is I'm trying to accomplish here. I'm going to go back to begging after I do two things. Explain why I decided to make this art piece the way that it is and share my critiques and opinions about the Yon Dairy Simulator game. Alright, so this contest had no theme. You can draw whatever you want so long as it contained a character from Yonderi Simulator. I thought drawing only one character would not be enough to help me win, so I decided to draw more than one. Three seemed like a perfect number, and from there it was pretty much decided what I was going to do. Now, like I said, I've never entered a Yon Sim art contest, but I have drawn numerous Yon Sim arts. In fact, this contest allows you to submit artworks you've made before the contest was even announced, so long as those works were not submitted to other contests before. Still, I wanted to make a piece that was specifically for this contest, but I couldn't really come up with a new idea. 
So I decided to just recreate old pieces of mine and improve upon it wherever I can. So I chose what is still my favorite Yon Sim fan art that I've ever made and the two companion pieces I made for it. Ever since the video of Ayano's childhood came out, I have been obsessed with Mini Yandere-chan. Look at that sweet, unfeeling face! I didn't know why I liked it so much at first, but I realized soon after that I liked it for the same reason I liked the whole video game altogether. The premise of the game is to hide the fact that you are an evil, sociopathic stalker by masquerading as a sweet, innocent schoolgirl. And the combination of cutesy, girly graphics inspired by shoujo anime and dark and sinister themes and gameplay mechanics just made my heart go doki doki. So leaning heavily on the concept of cute little girl who is secretly dangerous, I drew child Ayano in Harajuku. Harajuku is just the perfect thing to combine with Yandere Simulator. Not only because it is something that is heavily tied to Japanese culture, and this is a game that's Japanese coded, but also because many subset fashions under the umbrella term Harajuku is just unapologetically kawaii. And because it is a loud and proud fashion, it is sometimes very distracting. Distracting enough that anything ominous going on might just fade in the backdrop. I mean, is that blood Ayano is finger painting with? Who knows and who cares? It's adorable! And I like this idea so much that I made two companion pieces of Kudere and Midori. But now, instead of a separate piece for each of the girls, I decided to have them all in one artwork together so that they could achieve a compounding interest of cuteness. <laughs> Lol. So let's talk about the girls individually. Harajuku is an umbrella term, and there are actually many specific subsets which can be considered an entire and separate and even standalone fashion on its own. The three I used are called Dekorake, Fairy K, and Lolita. Let's start with Kudere and Dekorake. As those of you knowledgeable about this fashion already, you can see that I have committed a major sin already in my old artwork. Kudere, who is supposed to be wearing Dekorake, is not decorated at all. The entire concept of this fashion is to completely lather yourself in Elmer's glue and do barrel rolls inside an accessory shop. And whatever sticks to you is the completed look. Jokes aside, Kudere in my old artwork is not wearing a single accessory. She may be wearing layers upon layers of rainbow clothing, which is the other main aspect of the fashion. But without a single accessory, this is not really decorake at all. So I corrected that mistake in my redraw and decked Kudere out in as much rainbow bling as possible. I also added more patterns to her clothing to make her look as busy and as colorful as possible. Even the baseball bat weapon I chose for her is decorated with nails, spikes, and barbed wire so that it matches her overall look. Dekorake being arguably the loudest fashion in Harajuku, I found it appropriately ironic to put quiet and apathetic Kudere in this loud and over-the-top substyle. Kudere's subdued and aloof expression makes a great contrast to it all. To me, it was just perfect and just something I absolutely had to do. So next, there is Ayano in Fairy K. Now, I don't have much to say about this piece and her look. It pretty much speaks for itself. Fairy K pretty much has just one rule as a fashion, pastels. Layering can also be a big part of it, but it's not necessary for the look to count as Fairy K. So I didn't do anything overly special for Ayano. And I did this on purpose because I planned on Kudere's and Midori's look to be super extravagant. It will contrast nicely with Ayano's comparatively simple look and also help frame Ayano and make her stand out more. 
She is, after all, the main character. That's the reason she has a relatively simple design with no patterns, just solid pastel colors. You can see the same thought process in my old artwork of her, where she's also relatively simple. Another thing that adds contrast is that I did not give her any eye shines. Midori has eye shines for obvious reasons, and Kuderi got eye shines too, because despite being apathetic, Kuderi still had emotions. Whereas Iyano, being a child, has not met her senpai yet, so she has no emotions whatsoever reflected in her soulless gaze. I'm very happy with the way she turned out. She's so cute and even her weapons are adorable. Lastly, there's Midori in Lolita. Lolita is hands down the hardest fashion to pull off in the Harajuku subset styles because it has so many rules, like a shit ton of them. In the Lolita community, you have what is called an Ida phase. An Ida phase is basically the time period where when you first entered the fashion and didn't know all the rules and messed up your outfits, also called gourds, in some way. I'm actually in this community, but I've never had an Ida phase because when I first entered, my best friend, who already had a decade of experience in the fashion, wouldn't let me fuck up. No matter how much I wanted to. Like, why couldn't I wear my stilettos? Come on, they don't look that much like stripper heels, do they? I mean, I understand why I couldn't now, but years ago, I really wanted to, but I never did because I wasn't allowed. So my Ida face didn't come in the form of me wearing the fashion wrong, but rather in the form of my artwork. Like, look at this shit. All you frilly worns and frilly dorns out there are probably high-key cringing and raging right now. This is not Lolita fashion. Like, this isn't even the right silhouette. Oh god, she's not wearing any shoes. The jabot is, like, ugly. And what is that? An overdress or something? Overall, poorly executed. So Midori's look had to have a drastic change. So I based her outfit on an actual dress that I own. I have given her shoes and a headdress, and I even added a border print of gaming consoles on her dress because she's in the gaming club. I even had her weapon of choice, which is a shovel, look like a scepter, which a lot of Lolitas incorporate in their cords. Even if you're not in the fashion community, you can easily see that this is a massive improvement upon my old artwork. I am so proud of how Midori turned out, and even though her dress is based on a dress I do already own, I high-key want this dress as well because the border print looks better than I thought it would. So finally, before I end this video, I want to give my thoughts regarding the Yandere Simulator game and Yandere Dev. My critique of it all can be boiled down to one sentence. Stop making Ayano-chan into a good person. I know Yandere Dev listens to the critiques of his game's fandom, which is not a bad thing, but the only thing I wish he would ignore is the complaints that Ayano-chan is a bad person. No shit she's a bad person! You are playing the villain in this game! Now I understand that Yandere Dev puts in all these elimination methods, some of which are non-lethal because most people are not assholes and do not want to commit murder even in a video game. And that's fine, no one has to die. It's nice that a player has a lot of options at their disposal. But the one thing I wish for there to be in every elimination method, even the non-lethal ones, is for something morally reprehensible to occur. In the matchmaking elimination method, you have to stalk your rival, which is wrong. In the guidance counselor elimination method, you had to lie and steal, and that's horrible, and that's great. Yeah, no one's gonna die, but you are still playing as a sociopathic bastard. 
But in the demo for Osana's befriend and betray method, you had to rescue a kitten? That's so fucking righteous and noble! Ugh. Compared to Kokona's befriend and betray elimination method, where you had to straight up kidnap a girl and threaten to torture her, Osana's version is just so... nice. I mean, yeah, you help Kokona avoid becoming a teenage prostitute, and of course she would be grateful enough to give up on Senpai because of it, but you still had to do something extremely horrible to get to that result. Saving a kitten is not at all terrible, even if you had to trespass to do so. And like I said, most people are not murderous assholes, so they will like the elimination method where nobody gets hurt. It's nice that they have that option, but other people like myself want there to be gratuitous violence when you're playing a villainous Yandere girl. So it would be great if we had the option to kill the stalker who kidnapped the kitten in the first place. Yeah, you did something good with rescuing the kitten, but it reinforces the idea that Ayano-chan is not a good person by unnecessarily murdering the stalker. Because murdering the stalker would be optional. And trust me, people will want to murder the stalker. He kidnapped a freaking kitten for fuck's sake. And it's fine if Yandere Dev wants to cater to the critics and give the player the option to play Yandere Simulator as a good person. That is his prerogative. But I wish he wouldn't do it in the expense of people who don't want to be a good person at all, like not even a little bit, and not take and add in opportunities for Yanchan to be, well, a full-fledged Yandere. And that's pretty much my only complaint. I mean, there are other things I'm dissatisfied with, but those things are petty and nitpicky, like if you chose to betray Osana, can we keep the kitten? I mean, many serial killers do keep trophies, so it wouldn't be too out there for Ayano-chan to keep the kitten. But honestly, I just wanted to keep the kitten because I'm an animal lover. It's not really important to the gameplays, so I don't think it should matter. Anyways, Yandere-chan not being a good person is what's important here. So now that I'm done complaining about a game that I get to play for free, I am now going to go back to begging again. Please, 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 PLEASE help me win the contest! If I wasn't so tired from making this piece, I would draw a cartoon version of me prostrating on my hands and knees. I truly cannot articulate enough how much winning would mean to me. That being said, even if I don't win, I am still happy I made this even if it stressed me the hell out. And I actually do want to make another artwork to submit for the contest since you can submit more than one artwork. I drew this when the demo came out of Osana in the pretty Miyuki outfit. I did not work hard on this piece at all and there's just so much potential for me to do better. And I don't know if I have enough time to make it before the contest ends. But I'll probably make it anyways because I really do enjoy making Yandere Simulator fan art. And with that, I am done with everything I wanted to say in this video. And whether or not you decide to help me, I would still like to thank you for watching until the end. So here is my final artwork. You might have noticed I struggled to decide what the background is. And I just decided to go with Lovesick because Yandere Simulator is a mouthful and I really just like calling the game Lovesick. I think it suits the game very well. So I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Thank you once again for watching and goodbye. Take care. Ingat. <laughs>